Welcome to the Not Safe for Work Romance Podcast, where authors take you behind the scenes in our little corner of the romance writing world. I'm Shane Sterrett. And I'm Eris Adderley, and we write the kind of books that embarrass you in front of your relatives. In this episode, we're very excited to have Misha Stone with us. She's the USA Today bestselling author of the Reluctant Bride series and Mafia Bride series of dark, spicy romances, among many others. We're going to be talking to Misha about her books, about what got her started in writing romance in particular, and we're going to learn about the path she's taken to get to where she is today. We'll get some insights on Misha's writing style, what drives her as an author, and what we can expect to see from her in the future. But before we welcome. get to that, yes, welcome, Miss Stone. Uh, <laughs> before we get to that, I think that our listeners really have one thing that's uh, on their minds more than anything that might have to do with your quote unquote writing career. And of course, I'm speaking about the current political scandal that you're involved in there in the Chicago area, uh, but gate, I believe they're calling it. Um you you want to explain but, but gate? Yeah, but I want gate. to have that explained as well. I don't know what that is. No, I think that's what I would like. I think our listeners would like to hear about that too. How did you get involved in but gate? And um exactly what are you doing to uh extricate yourself from this uh very sordid uh, political scandal you've involved yourself in. Why would I want to get out of that scandal? <laughs> like, that sounds like an amazing thing to have happened. Like, that would be silly to not. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't believe you're taking this as seriously as you should be. You sound as if you think this is funny or. It's called Budgate. Why would that? That's amazing. That's like a stepping stone. Why would I want to get off? I don't know. You own that. And you just step <laughs> right into it. <laughs> I see. So if you were, in fact, involved in a political scandal called Buttgate, it wouldn't be one that you were trying to get out of, but only dig yourself deeper into. Yeah, because there's butt stuff in some of my books. So I, really? And, and it's not like you haven't done a, uh, a video or audio uh, uh, recording at one top point in time with Jennifer. With Jen- yes. Oh, yes. That was... <laughs> That was hilarious and a very fun time to sit in bed with another woman. Yes. And talk about butt stuff. Butt stuff. Okay. What is, what is butt gate? Because I live in like the middle of nowhere and I don't leave my house. And sometimes I just, I don't like look at the news for days at a time. There could be a zombie apocalypse. I wouldn't know. What, what is this? It's something I made up. I'm a writer. Oh my God. Well, okay, Shane. First of all, I'm up. glad you live as two states away, so you can't. I can't come there and smack you right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Is Second that the of only- all, there could have been a romance landia scandal. You oh, know what I'm saying? Okay. There, I mean, if we had cocky gate, we could have butt gate. We could you know start that. You know what? Like, hey. There could have been some infamous like Amazon book cover that got kicked off because there was half a cheek. I don't know. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're onto Where something here. It has happened. We're onto something here. You know, we could copyright butt stuff and then, you know, go to the angels in a come for you. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Hey, you know what? If somebody's going to come after me, I can't think of a better person to have come after me than Golden Angel. All right. Not going to lie. We could have her come after, but we could do it collectively. You know, the three of us copyrighted butt stuff. And, you know, and now we're going to need um, royalties from anyone who uses it. And it, it will be retroactive. So any book or any uh, promotional stuff that where she's used uh, butt stuff, she'll have to pay us a fee. I, 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 honestly, I, You're gonna I'm going to send out a cease and desist letter to people. C and D, absolutely. In case they get cheeky. Cheeky. But, um, <laughs> oh, I said what I said. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a secondary revenue stream that I think we shouldn't ignore. And that's what we want. Passive income, right? That's what you always want. And that is exactly what this would be. There you go. Right. Perfect. Absolutely. See, I told you, I told you, even though when I first wrote this down and I said, oh, this is going to die a horrible, miserable death. Look what's happened here. We have actually created something here that, you know, is going to benefit all three of us. I, I, I'm actually, when I read it in the outline, I legit was going, what, what is going on now in Romance Landia? Like, what BS is happening now? Who got plagiarized? What's going on on Amazon? I like, I'm sitting here trying to, I'm like, you do not have time to go on Twitter and look for this hashtag because, <laughs> you know, it's going to uh, take up your whole day. Well, all right. Now I would, I would have felt even more dumb. So I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> oh, so Misha, mm-hmm. I am trying to honestly think back. 
to the very, very, very first time that you and I spoke together. Um, and I know it was online. And I want to say it was around the same time that that audio that we spoke about um, not just a few moments ago that you did with Jennifer uh, came out. And I believe I made some snarky comment about it. And it, it escapes me now, though, exactly how it segued into us actually talking. And then uh, we uh, we spent time together online in um that little group we had where we were doing sprinting. Um, and then, of course, when I first met you at uh, Delightfully Dirty in Dallas two years ago now, almost. Yeah, that's yeah. the first time I saw you in person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I have to say, it has been amazing just having you not only being able to uh, glean from you certain things about being an author, but just as a person, you are truly an amazing person and you are funny and you're kind and you've always been helpful. You've never once uh, said to me, well, I don't have time for that. Or uh, you should learn that on your own. You've always, anytime I've asked a question, you've always said, well, this is what I would do, or this is what I've done. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we've talked about in previous episodes that is so empowering about this community that we're in, uh, not only uh, with authors, but with readers, is how helpful in general people are. And I know we have our own set of drama and we, we've all experienced it. We've all read stories about it. But by and large, compared to some other communities that uh, we've been in, um, it, it's not nearly as toxic. And you're one of those people that exemplifies that. And I'm not trying to, you know, blow smoke up your ass or anything like that, but um, we'll do that another time. That's yeah. how Budgate gets started. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and okay. and uh, we, we can, we can, you know, take care of that sort of business offline, but <laughs> it, it's true. It's, um, a, it's, you are one of those people that really, to me, makes being a part of this community uh, such a, a, an incredible thing. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. And um, I didn't know you're going to say nice things about me. I'm not prepared for that. Oh, That's a, that, this is like a weird, like, like <laughs> dom version of torturing a person that has like self esteem issues. Yeah, it totally is. Like this. Like <laughs> wow, this this just gets better and better. I which, mean, which, by the way, uh, well, I'll I'll save that for later. But I I, I have some something like that line for a certain dom in my oh, okay. already known but anyway let us move on so it um, hurts me too misha it hurts me I, I know it's like it's physical pain oh my god <laughs> stop but i know he's it's coming from love, from a place of love so i'll accept it well thank you thank you eris when did you first meet misha i i think the first time we met was in reno and i think it was the last of the RT cons, like the last year they did it. I don't remember what year that was, like 2016, 17. I don't, I don't remember what year it was. Uh, but yeah, that, that is where we first met. Um, the Misha was Misha. We were in a group. Uh, you know, I had seen, I'd seen your name, you know, in our circles online, but I had not met you in person before. Uh, yeah, that was we, I remember at one point we went to have a meal and there were several of us there and everybody's, you know, talking, talking author stuff. And uh, Misha was there, but she's very quiet. And I was like, mm. Not, I can't get a read on this person. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm weird just, like that. When I'm not sure if she maybe me. just thinks I'm an asshole. No, I have like, <laughs> but, oh, I have like the worst RBF, like the worst. But, but me too, though. So it's like even after, like after I got to know you, and then I, like I learned how nice you are, I like then I felt like a jerk because I'm like, you know, you don't like it when people do that to you or assume that you are like a jerk. So, <laughs> well, I didn't assume you were a jerk, but I'm just saying, like, I have the, I have the bitchy resting face myself. So uh, I, I, I have always, people I, be like, I get that whenever I meet someone, like at first, they're not really sure what to make of me. But then once I get to know them and like, I get more comfortable and like, I can be myself. Then they're like, man, when I first met you, I thought you were such a bitch. But I didn't think you not. were a bitch. I, not, I just I'm don't just... have self-esteem. So I just thought you didn't like me. Like <laughs> I, I was sure I'm like, oh she's God. probably friends with everyone else here. And then, and then literally my presence is like putting her off. Like oh God, that's, no. that's how I roll. That's, that's how I conduct my life. I just, it's, it's really weird. Like when I first meet someone, I have already assumed that you don't like me. 
So I'm just going to remain quiet until you approach me. Because- We're there staring each other down introvertedly. For yeah. Reason, like- <laughs> Waiting sounds- for the next the other person to make a move. <laughs> it sounds like a Mexican standoff. It's like- it is. It's horrible. This is why I don't meet people. Because unless someone like introduces me. because But it's like a tinfoil hat standoff. Because we're both paranoid. Oh yeah. my gosh, you guys are terrible. <laughs> terrible. We need facilitators to get other people. Yeah, to we like do. I do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, sure. So, <laughs> Misha, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, as much as you would like to share, um, let us let our listeners know who Misha Stone is and how she came to be where you're at today. But don't talk about yourself in third person, no matter what kind of prompts Shane gives you. Oh, damn. <laughs> weird, and you should make him feel weird about it. Oh, my God. No, that's not going to happen. First <laughs> of all. Don't worry about that. You're not going to make me feel weird. But um, if you don't do the third person thing at least once, I'm going to be disappointed. How about that? Okay, well, I'll, I'll slip it in somewhere. What do you okay. the, the, the royal we is for? a lot of fun, though. Okay, so I'm, well, I'm, I'm an introvert, obviously. Like... <laughs> But other than that, <laughs> um, <laughs> so as for like writing, I've always written like since I could, and it just like, it was just a thing that I did and I didn't realize that like everyone didn't do it and which turns out they don't. Uh, and then, uh, so I knew I always wanted to be an author. I, that was always just a given, but I never thought I actually could. So I would pick other things to be like, what are you going to be when you grow up? Like, well, I, I want to be an author, but that's not going to happen. So I'll do this instead. And so I had several lives before I actually started to like publish things. And when I started publishing, it was kind of like, well, I'll see what happens. And it kind of worked. It's like, okay, well, I'll do another book and see what happens then. And that kind of worked too. So then I just kind of went with it and I had a little fun doing it. And now it's gotten me like, here (laughs) but also like like you said shane like the romance world with other authors is so generous with information and with helping Mm -hmm. and like you don't get stonewalled you don't typically get lied to i mean there's always bad players always there's a bad player somewhere but in general you're just not going to come up against those things so it was very i don't want to say easy but it was easier because I was able to ask people things and they were, they were happy to help. Yes, exactly. So when people feel like people are just zealously guarding things like, oh, this is my personal secret and no one can know because only exactly. I can tell Exactly. And there are like, other the genres where that is like so cutthroat. Like they will absolutely not, they, they could cover their papers. Like, no, you can't look at this. Too bad for you if you don't know. And it's not like that with romance. So, but like my downfall was that, you know, the introvert part and never really good at talking to people that I don't know. <laughs> that was well, hard. But once I got going, I was I was I was okay. Well, let um, me ask you this. You because you mentioned it. You said you've always written, like from an early age. I'm I'm assuming that's yeah. what you mean by that. But yep. did you did you keep it to yourself? Did you share it with, you know, anyone or was it like di- like, you know, hidden diary sort of thing? No, I did. I shared it with, um, I remember showing my mom a story when I was really little and <laughs> it was a dark story. Imagine, imagine me and writing something dark. And she was like worried. She was like, you can't, you can't show people this because they're going to think that like bad things are happening to you here at home. I'm like, that's not what I'm writing about at all. <laughs> like it's not right. a diary, mom. It's a story. She's like, yeah, but people are going to think bad things. I'm like, okay. So I just didn't show anybody those things, but Um, I did show, I did show her, I show my, I used to show my sisters some stories that I wrote, but sometimes I just kept it to myself. So, but I did share it with some people, like they knew what I wanted to do. Like, so that was when I was in high school, I had my, I, I wrote, I wrote a book in high school. Uh, my mom had gotten me into reading historical romances and that's when I had gotten like really like the romance bug. So I had written a book and I needed it printed out and we didn't have a printer. So my, um, I asked my dad to take the disc and he took it to whatever store there was around that time to to do those things. And he came home with it and it was all bound and everything for me. And he's like, you, you wrote this? Cause it was like 400 pages. I'm like, yeah. And he was like, your dad has no idea. You're actually up to stuff. (laughs) Yeah. He's like totally flabbergasted. He's like, okay. And then, um, 
he found in the newspaper, this is kind of a little bit off topic, I guess, but whatever. So he found like there was a poetry contest and he gave it and he told me about it. He's like, you should enter this. And I'm like, well, I don't know. And he's like, what's the worst that happened? I'm like, well, okay. So I entered it and it turned out to be one of those scams. You know, one of those oh. like, contests where, like everybody, then they want to charge you for the thing when yes. it comes out or whatever. Yes. So when right. I got the letter and it was like, Oh, you won. I'm like, Oh my God. And I'm like, look at this. And then as we were reading it, cause he was reading it with me and my, him and my mom. And then I just, when I got to the paragraph for like, and if you want a copy of the book that your thing's going to be in, it's $30 plus shipping and handling. And I was like, Oh, and then he, he, I could just see their faces too. They're like, Oh, it was, you know, but whatever. But yeah. So I did show people. So like they, and I still have that book somewhere because they did buy it for me that um, I imprinted in there somewhere. But do, um, do you feel that the, like the two things that you were just talking about, like one, when you had shown your mom some of your early work and it was, it was dark and your mom was like, Oh, don't, don't show people this outside the house. They're going to think, you know, that you're drawing on, you know, some sort of your own darkness that's going on and be worried that like weird crap is going on in the house. Um, between that and then stuff like you were very excited about this other situation. And then you kind of found out it's one of those things where they're just trying to get money out of you. Like, do you think as time progressed that, that those were hurdles to going back into it because you had like two like kind of negative experiences there, like, or that didn't really stop you? Well, I, it didn't really stop me too much. Like the dark stuff, like I was like, well, whatever. I know what's in my head isn't normal. Like normal, because I think I was like 10 and I'm like, and I knew 10 year olds weren't thinking the way I was thinking. So I, I already knew that. I was very weird as a child. I was a complete weirdo. So like, I, I was, I feel you. I was comfortable with that. Like I was completely weird. But um, the poetry thing, I think that did impact me a little bit only because it kind of opened my eyes that there are people out there that just want to screw you over. And I kind of then figured, and I think that's where I got into my head, like, okay, I'm probably never going to actually become a writer, but I still want to write because I like it. But I think that that started the seed of like, it's not going to happen. Hmm. I know for me, it would make, I like, I would be, and I saw stuff like that. And I, it would just make me be skeptical of everything now. You know what I mean? Like right. anytime there's anybody like presenting any opportunity, I'm like, well, where's, you know, yeah, when's the thing going to pop up to be yeah. like, oh, okay. When, when, right. When's the other shoe going to fall here? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Now, did you at any point utilize, um, like in, with some of the other people that we've talked with and, uh, Eris has, uh, experienced this did you uh, go the literotica route or uh, uh adult fan fiction or any of those kinds of uh i didn't know what any of those things were okay. until livia had mentioned it jen had mentioned it and i was like what are you guys talking about and then because i had never heard of it i but um so no i didn't i didn't but i think that's like a really good thing and i wish i had because i would have been able to build an audience before I was started trying to publish and I would have been able to get really good feedback. Although I know literatica sometimes can be pretty brutal. I've heard yeah. it, it can, because they allow a non, you know, like Amazon, you have to have bought like 50 bucks worth of stuff to leave a review. You know what I mean? Or yeah. literatica, you can be anonymous, not even logged in and make, so, you know, the anonymous people are usually the worst because, Ooh, I can hide behind, you know, you can't click on my profile and send me an email. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Yeah. So yeah. those people can be assholes, but I, I will say from my experience, it did help me develop a, fairly thick skin for bullshit for people just being cruel to be cruel. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't like it, but I feel like I'm more hardened to that kind of stuff than if I had not been writing there first. I still put something up there once in a while. I put some up there last year, just short thing, but it's like, it's kind of a reader magnet because pe people are like 1500 people have followed me on there. So they see something and then they go to my profile and it's like, Oh, well they have other stuff on Amazon. Let's go see. Like those are great places to start. And even like when you're trying to try something new, yeah. like I've thought about like, there's stuff that I want to try writing. And I'm like, well, maybe I should do something like that. Go to literatica or some of these sites and just play. Like it's almost like a safe place to play. Like, like I don't, I don't have to put like any money towards it, any marketing towards it. It's just a playground. If like, maybe if I treat it as a playground, that would be a good place to go. I just haven't done it yet. And you could do it under an alt name too, if you wanted to, so you right. don't have to worry about like, right. you know, yes. yeah. whether or not this appeals to your existing audience or whatever. Right. It's yeah. Something that you don't already write, which we may come back to. Yes, exactly. Um, now, outside of your writing, you 
you did work in the corporate world. Actually, you work in the medical field, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you did that for a long time, didn't you? Yes. I was a practice manager for a six physician ophthalmology practice. Wow. And I had been the practice manager for eight years. Six years prior to that, I had actually been an ophthalmic technician. So I, I so for 14 years, I worked for the same um, same office. And you were still writing during all of that time, correct? Yes. I started writing while I was there and yeah. turning in that resignation letter was amazing. It tore, it tore you apart from what I remember. I, I, I think there were a <laughs> lot of tears shed and a lot of hand wringing that you, uh, you might've made a mistake and you wanted to go back and that, because um, if, if, if I remember correctly, who you worked for was someone that you had a tremendous amount of respect for and, um, <laughs> And even to this, is hilarious. <laughs> None of those things are true. None of those are true. I'm glad Misha's clearing this up because, like, this <laughs> this jokester here, man. I don't no. ever know what's going on with him. Yeah, no. When I turned that resignation letter in and I told him why I was leaving, because he just assumed. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, and he assumed that I was leaving because of those things, which really would have been enough reason to go. But that wasn't why. So and I was like, no, I'm I'm leaving to pursue my writing. And he was like, are you sure you can make money doing that? And I, I looked at him. I said, I already am. I've already like, no. Yeah, we're good. Thanks. You're like, I'm literally going to sprain a retina right now, rolling my eyes back in my head. That's what yeah. I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have to deal with it, sir. Yeah. yeah. And it, 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 to me, it's when I hear other authors talk about that, because, you know, it happened like with Golden and it happened with Jennifer. Um, it's like that is just yet another aspect of our genre that people do that they they do that are you sure you want to do that because you can't really make money doing that can you and i'm like have you done any research at all and do you have any concept of how much money is made in our genre in particular compared to all other genres but and yet we're still the redheaded stepchild yeah, I don't understand that. It's like, people oh, don't honey, I'm not writing the biography. This is, yeah. this is stuff right. that people buy. <laughs> right. Um, I don't, I don't understand. I'll never understand that. Like, like they turn up their nose at it. And I've kind of taken to the attitude of like, I really, I don't care what you think about that. Like, I love reading it. I love writing it. Like, I didn't ask you to enjoy it with me. Like, if you don't enjoy it, read what you want to read, but you know, whatever. But right. And sometimes I think because when we have day jobs, you know, a lot for the most part, I mean, you know, we may have some work friends that we open up to more, but a lot of that stuff is, you know, private and outside our work life. And especially if it's the kind of stuff we write, that's got a bunch of sex in it. You know, we don't really talk about that at work. So when, you know, when the, this is why I'm leaving comes out, like, you know, a lot of times the people did not know that you were doing that, you know, and had been doing that for a long time. So it's like, it's not in their head that, oh, this person does this also. So they right. probably in their head are feeling like, like you just decided to do this five minutes ago with like no lead up or something. Well, the, it was funny because the, um, my staff knew what that I was writing. They knew mm -hmm. that I wrote and that, well, that, that eventually I was hoping to, to do that full time. So when I did give my resignation, well, they were not happy, obviously, because like I said, that place was kind of a mess and it was a big they was going through some changes that were just going to be horrible. So they were, didn't like that. I was leaving because somebody else would be coming in and all this stuff. But when I told them why a lot, most of the reactions, almost all of them were, I really don't want you to, and I'm angry that you're going, but I'm really glad that you're pursuing your dream. So that was also very helpful to have that support. Cause he, he didn't, he doesn't know anything about anybody in he word that worked for him. So he, his opinion really didn't matter to me, but it was also funny. <laughs> Just, it was, it, I actually enjoyed this quite a bit. There was um, a, cons a consultant group that at the time was like going, combing over all the stuff in the company. And when I resigned, I, they didn't get my, they called me for the daily like brow beating. And then they hadn't gotten my email yet that about my resignation. So they were going on and on and on. I'm like, I'm sorry, did, did you not get my email? And she was like, <laughs> and she's like, no, I didn't see anything from you today. I'm like, I sent it first thing this morning. I'm resigning. I, you know, I, I gave him a six week notice, which I thought was pretty fair, but. Good Lord. That is fair. That's more than fair. Right. And my woman, you know, hiring a manager is not like 
they really, well, anyway, it, it, they're a whole mess, whole mess. Even with that, I had to hire my own, I had to hire my own replacement. I had to put my own ad out. It was just a mess. But anyway, so she's um, on the phone with me and she's like, well, so are you going somewhere else? And I said, no. And I, I told her, I'm, you know, I'm going to pursue my writing. And she was like, well, let me know if you ever get published. <laughs> oh, wow. And I just sat at my desk and I just leaned back in my chair. I'm like, oh, my um, sweet summer child. I'm already published but thanks. And she's yeah. like, you are, are you on Goodreads? I'm like, yes. And so she's like, can I have your pen name? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I gave it to her and she looked it up and she's like, people actually like your books. I'm like, wow, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Who does Amazing. think it? Yeah. I, 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 I it don't was actually quite only in a vacuum in this office. Right. Yeah. Quite, quite satisfying. That one was like, she was like, do you know Goodreads? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Like, yeah. unfortunately. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I know You're Amazon. And, yeah. I, it, 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 it sometimes amazes me that, you know, people feel like they're going to say something like that as if they're going to save you from yourself. Right. Oh, I don't know if you should do that. And it's like, really, you're that disconnected from the reality of, of what I do and what I write and, and, you know, what is the, it, what an author, a good author is capable of in this genre. Um, thanks for your opinion, but I think I'm going to stick to my guns here and uh, do what I want to do. Right. I'm, I'm always yeah. kind of amazed. Some of the, uh, I don't know what incorrect impressions a lot of people have about being an author, like to, for a living. I, I recently, there was someone I was getting my nails done because I'm a pretty princess, obviously. Yeah, and, princess, uh, you're a queen. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, I tell that's what I tell my husband all the time when he calls me princess. I'm like, uh, yes. no, I am a queen. It's different. Um, but the the lady that was doing my nails, like she was, she was asking me what did I do for a living. I was like, oh, I I write, I write books like fiction. And she's like, oh, see that there was, you know, there's other clients in the thing. And she says, oh, see that guy over there? He's a, he comes in here all the time. His, his life is really interesting. You should talk to him. You should write about his life. And I'm just like, no, you know, I just, I write fiction. Like, I don't really like do biography or that kind of stuff. You know, I'm just trying to be like politely, like, that's not really what I do. She's like, oh, no, he, he has a really interesting life. You should talk to him. And I'm just like, you know, I just kind of like segued out of that. But I'm just like, one, you're not hearing me. But two, I'm like, it's not it's not like really interchangeable like that. You know what I'm saying? Like just cause I write romance, it's like not all writing is interchangeable. I'm not going right. to turn around tomorrow and become like a sports journalist. And it's just going to be a, just a smooth transition, <laughs> but it kind of cracked me up. I'm like, why would I just write a biography of a random man in a nail salon? Yeah. For no reason? Oh, you're a writer, write this, write that. Like, no, it doesn't. There's some things like there's no way, like I cannot do a nonfiction book. I probably could, but it would depend on what it was. If it was something that it was like I cared about my area of interest, I probably could because I'm very pedantic. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a great place to segue into our next uh, topic that we'd like yes. to discuss, which is your books. So how many books have you published to date, Misha? Um, over 30, I think. Okay. I'm at. Hot. And uh, I know at the very beginning, um, uh, Eris mentioned uh, a couple of your series, the Reluctant Bride series, the Mafia Bride series. Mm -hmm. um, what the one that I read uh, was the was it called the Chicago series or what? Uh, Windy City. Windy City. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So you've got several series out there. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like? you can be pinned down to a certain niche uh, uh, or do you feel like that's something that, that you, you know, chafe against or uh, uh, what the term that we often hear used is uh, do you have a lane and do you try to stay in your lane or do you just write what you want to write? I kind of a mixture. Okay. Like when you, think of when I try to think about like, what do I want to write next? Like whatever is striking my fancy is really what's going to happen. And then I try to figure out like, well, is that really something that people that read my other books, are they going to like it? It doesn't mean that if I want to write it and the answer to the second part is no, doesn't mean I'm not going to write it. Like I probably still will <laughs> like, because I'm really, I first write for myself. Okay. But I also try to stick somewhere in the realm of like, this is what people are going to enjoy. Luckily, usually what I like to entertain myself with is also entertaining to a lot of other people. 
So I don't have to, but like, if I'm, if there's a book that I want to write and I'm like, this isn't my normal thing, I'm still going to write it. Like, well, like Dolly, like that book is not my typical book, but I had to write it. Like it just wouldn't leave me alone. So I had to do it. That actually was going to be one of the ones that I brought up was Dolly because I was fortunate enough to alpha read uh, Dolly and it was compared to the Windy City series, a departure in in many ways. And I thought it, it was interesting because for me and for my style and for things that tickle my fancy, for lack of a better term, Dolly hit a lot of those buttons. Um, not that there was anything wrong with the Windy City series, uh, but that was that. Really different. that yeah, it was different. It was different and it hit a different set of buttons. Um, it, Dolly was dark. I mean, let's face it, it was pitch black. Dark and dark. twisted and sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I loved it. Um, I thought, you know, wow, this is not what I would have expected from you. Uh, but I was totally into it. I totally dug it. Um, and it, it, I was just curious because, again, it threw out, through your body of work, and I may be oversimplifying this, but I would more... I don't want to say classify, but what I've read of you, I think more of uh, BDSM, okay, dominance and submission, um, and Dolly. I guess you might, in a very twisted way, call that a dominance and submission, maybe master slave, but it was it was just so dark and so deliciously good. Um, yeah, I really love. I really love that one. And like, and that one was totally, like, it's totally different. Like all of my other stories are basically contemporary romance with BDSM or like some sort of form of dominant and submission in it. Right. You know, like you're saying, and that, and Dolly is completely different. So that, that book was a perfect example of, I'm usually in the same lane because I like that lane, but if I want to take the highway, I'm going to jump on the highway. Okay. So that's. And the best. Let me ask you this. Do you see yourself ever going? Was that a one time thing? Or like I needed to get out of my system. So I did. And I loved it. But I'll never do it again. Um, no, or, I, I I do want to get back on that. And OK, into that. I like I like thrillers. Like if I'm not reading romance, I read thrillers. Like that's my second go to. So I I would love to write thrillers and like psychological thrillers and those types of things. But I find with that, I really have to be in that mindset. I can't be doing anything else. Like when I was writing Dolly, I wasn't writing any other story. I wasn't editing any other story. I wasn't marketing anything else. I was all Dolly all the time. And in order for me to do another book like that, it would have to be the same situation. And I just haven't gotten that spark yet, but like I have ideas and I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool. And that'd be really twisted. And oh, that's a good twist. But, you know, it, it's just, ha I have to get my head totally into it. Okay. And well, you'll find that subject material you feel like at some point, and that'll spark that the, cre the, the creation part of that story. And then that's when it'll take off. It's, it's that, is it that kind of thing? Yeah. You're just like waiting for that particular, oh, there you go. That's what I want to write about in that twisted, dark, delicious way. Yes, exactly. Okay. So we were talking about uh, you finding um, that story uh, arc, let's say, or that story idea that's going to uh, prompt you to want to, to write that kind of story. Um, uh, another one like Dolly. Right. Uh, yes. In it's got to hit you like an obsession pretty right. much to do yeah. it. But in the meantime, you're still writing the, um, the BDSM uh, dominance and submission uh, uh, style books that are, are what you, I don't want to say are your bread and butter, but they're what you're probably best known for. And what, I don't want to say what people's expectations are, but for lack of a better term, that's when someone says, Oh, I'm going to get Misha Stone's newest book. That's kind of what what they're going for is like, oh, they know that this is going to be it's going to have those elements. in it. Um, yeah, I think if someone picked up a book of mine and there wasn't a spanking, a punishment, some sort of lecture, any of that stuff, in it, they would be like, what? 
what the hell is this? Did she <laughs> like, get a ghostwriter? What's going on? Yeah, here? she didn't yeah. write this. She, <laughs> yeah. she had this ghost written. Um, <laughs> but there's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, well, I guess maybe a better question is, do you feel like that limits you in any way, shape or form? Or, or I mean, you're writing those uh, books and I assume you enjoy writing them. You're not just doing it. You know, as a, you know, well, I got to get some words on a page. So I'm going to slog through this. I primarily first thing, and I've always been very upfront with my readers, with everybody. I write for myself first. So if it's something that I don't like, I won't write it because I wouldn't read it. So it's got to, I have to enjoy it. Which is probably why your books are great because people can feel the love that went into it. They can feel how much you were absorbed in it. I, I always, so. I feel like I can just feel a vibe when an author just uh, doesn't care anymore about a series or a book. You're just like, mm, I don't, I don't, I don't know that they gave a crap about this, these characters. Yeah. And, and, and we've all seen that happen. We've all uh, experienced that in some fashion or another where, you know, that phoned in, uh, you, you, you're reading this book and you're going, okay, that she clearly phoned or he clearly phoned this in. They, they were not invested in this story. I remember the first time I read a story like that. It was from, so I, I, it was a big author, a huge author. And I had read like almost everything in her, in her catalog. And I read the book and I don't, I don't remember what the book, it, what book it was because it was a long time ago. And I remember my mom had read the same book. And so it was a, it must've been a hist- historical romance. And I asked her, I'm like, did you like that book? She was like, oh yeah, it was good. I'm like, eh, it kind of felt like she had a deadline or like she had a contract, you know, like, because when you get a contract, from what I hear, I'll never have one, but if, <laughs> like they'll sign you for like three books. And they just, it felt like this was the third book that she had to give them. And since it was, it was like a have to, she had to write it. Yeah. And I remember thinking, I'm like, I never want to do that. I never want to do anything that's not going to be fun for me because it's, I could hug you so hard right now. It's my imagination. Hug you. And I say what happens. <laughs> Yeah. And because I, I, I had that exact same feeling. I read some books that were, you know, a famous, well known author, probably most of us have read stuff by. And, you know, or three ish books in the series. They were pretty, I remember getting to like four or five, and I'm just like, I really feel like this author ran out of things to say about these characters. But the publisher is like, no, no, you need to give us more books in the series because they sell and make everybody a lot of money. And so I felt like the author was like having to just invent drama for these characters. And it just, it felt manufactured. It felt like, you know, there could have been a, there could have been a period on this. There could have been HEA and we would have been cool. But it's like, oh, now I got to come up with something else to go wrong to, you know. Yeah. To, to push these characters through yet to, another. To make these people be upset or yeah. under a different love interest situation or whatever. Um, and it, it, and, and it, I, yeah, like, like you just exactly just said, that's why I want to hug you so much. I was like, I don't ever want to be, in, I don't want to make any reader feel that. Feel like this author is just phoning it in because they feel obligated to. Right. And people go, oh, we, I want more of, you know, there's a couple books for me infamously that people are like, yeah. write another one like this. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have anything more to say about those characters. Like, I, I like, I, I'm so happy you love them so much. It makes me so glad. But like, I lit- I just don't have anything else to say. And I don't want it to feel crappy and cardboardy. But you know, that's just it just because guys, people want it. It won't be as good as the original. Yeah. But that's kind of the height of compliments is when you've written a book and I know exactly which book you're talking about because I've been as a reader, I'm that guy. I'm that guy that's like, Oh my God, I wish you would just bring back Bill and Christina. And it's like, but you're right. It, it, if it, I get some, you know, sure. If you wild hair one day that like, I have an idea and this, Oh, this will be like a great second book. I've, I'm of course I'll write it. But like, as of right now, I just, right. My brain can't think of anything to like, and again, I don't want to try to force it. Right. And, and it'll we, be crummy. We all know how our readers are because, and like in my case, I'm one of them. We want the stuff that made us have all the feels and we want it right now. And why the hell can't you just pound out another bass backwards for us? You're a writer monkey. Get sit in front of that I know, keyboard. I and I feel but like I want, I want to give people what they want, but like, but, I, I know in my heart that it will be not it's always like like there's movies like that too like oh this yep. is so good and and people think they want a sequel and the sequel comes out and you're like eh, yeah okay i guess you know what I mean? and like i don't ever want people to think that right so. exactly so misha writing style 
what what how would you best characterize your style of writing? I mean, I have my own opinion and I'm sure other people do too, but I want to hear what how you characterize your style of writing. Um I hate this question. No, I'm sorry. What do you mean by style, I'm, Shane? Do you mean okay. like her process or do you mean no, like no, what does no. her voice sound like? Like does yes. she sound like a certain era of author? Are, like what what are you asking? Uh, I not not process, because why we're gonna talk about that later, but style in terms of do you feel like you're a um a uh a uh, flowery writer, or florid writer, a oh. concise writer. Um, do you feel like you you excel at dialogue and less at exposition, or vice versa? Uh, what what parts of your writing do you feel like this is where I'm super strong, and this is why I write my books tend to be uh, very dialogue heavy, let's say, or exposition heavy, or whatever. That kind of writing style. I mean. The, the, every writer has that uh, about their style. I mean, some writers, the dialogue is what drives their stories. And you're like, when these characters are talking, I can literally, it literally feels like I'm sitting in a room with them. And others, writers, the descriptions of the world around them that they're building for you are what draw you into it. Not that their dialogue can't be great too, but right. you know, one typically is is more pronounced than the other. And that's what I'm asking you, Misha, is how do you see yourself? I'm probably more bare bones where I think, and I guess if I, if I have a strength, if I have to say I have a strength, I would, I think, I think it's my dialogue. I have, I tend to have more dialogue than like, I have no flowery prose. I can't do it. I love it. Like, yours, Shane. I, mm -hmm. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And I Thank you. get very, very envious. And like, I wish Thank I could you. do that. Mm -hmm. But I, when, when I go to write it, I, I just, those words don't come. I'm more raw and bare bones. Like this is what's going dialogue. on. And like, I have to go back and remind myself, like, you need to tell people what these characters are thinking and feeling. You can't just like my first drafts tend to be more like, go stage left and stage right. <laughs> it is um, very descriptive. So I have to go back and put descriptions and such. And so I, I would say I'm more bare bones and I would, I think my strength is more of my dialogue only because I hear the characters in my head and I just put down what they're saying in my head. And it seems natural to me. And now I'm probably going to have like 10 people like, a ton of people are probably listening to this, but like, no, your dialogue sucks. So, but that's, no. there it is. That's what it is. No, because what you just said is exactly what it, I would have said about your writing. Um, I think, and this is just a, a reader's personal opinion, and it's my opinion only, but your writing is concise and your dialogue is so spot on. Um, and I know you write contemporary, so uh, it's it's so easy and I'm thinking of the story that uh, you let me uh, alpha read for you for the anthology, um, it, uh, the Blacklight anthology. Mm -hmm. it, the dialogue in that was so relatable. And it, it literally, like when she first comes into uh, the brew pub and the, the conversation that she's having with him um, and while the, the other hipster guys are down at the end of the bar getting ready to... Uh, close out their evening. Every bit of that dialogue was without being, you know, without a lot of descriptive language, you know, describing the brew pub itself. It was, it was just so evocative enough though, because I've heard those kinds of conversations, of course, not that exact conversation because right. I would have been leaning over to, to listen in on that, <laughs> but, but those kinds of conversations and and then and, and that's been true of, of everything of yours that I've read. The dialogue drives your stories for me. And I don't necessarily need, nor do I want, because of you as an author, when I know what I'm going into, when I'm going to read one of your stories, I don't necessarily want a lot of that flowery prose. Um, 
mostly because I just it's an expectation I have of you when I uh, when I'm reading one of your stories is that I'm going to be drawn into this story by the dialogue between these these people. Um, and I think I don't know, I, I can't speak for you, but I think if you tried to force some of that flowery descriptive language in there, it might draw me away from the story and I might be thrown off by it. Um, it it's no different than when I'm reading one of Eris's stories is I expect that that rich descriptive language that draws me in. Not that the, the dialogue is bad. I'm not trying to say that, but it it's terrible. It, you I, hate I, it. No, <laughs> stop, stop. I but you understand what I'm saying. That's what I expect. When I crack open a book by you, I I want that that snappy dialogue that 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 I can hear that I don't have to imagine these people saying it. I hear it because that's the way people talk. Um, and the same thing when I want a world built for me that I'm just going to like lay in and roll around and wrap around me. That's what I get when I read one of Eris's stories. And, yeah. and I, I love that. I, I love having those two different styles, writing styles, and associating them with an author because it draws me into those books. Um, it's what it's an expectation. Now I say that, and I w- I'm I'm curious. Do you find that limiting? Do, I mean, do, does it bother you in any way, shape, or form? Sometimes, only because I think that people want more than I'm giving. But then I have to remind myself that I'm writing for myself and not for them. And then I go back to my original way. And also because when I do try to be more pretty in my words, or I try to do way more description of, of scenes and such, I, it doesn't feel natural to me and it, it just feels dry. And then I don't like it. And I end up cutting most of it out anyway. And then I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I, I feel like, I, it's gonna I, feel I, natural, or why you know? Yeah, it, it, if it's forced, if if it's forced, it's it's gonna come across as forced. I mean, I don't know. It just it it, it seems very difficult to expect a uh, an author to write something that's outside of their normal writing style uh, without it coming across as being a either an exercise because I wanted to try this. Or, or it just being very forced. And, and that, writing right. a book is hard enough without it. You yeah. having to add in, oh, let me try to do this a way that I don't like doing it. And that I don't normally do it. And especially like if it does sound forced, that, that I know is probably going to make my readers go, oh, what, what's going on here? This isn't right. what, what I expected or what I've come to know or what, you know, is this author's strength? Um <laughs> When I was in high school, they, on my senior year, they finally started adding some like other classes besides just like regular English. So they added, um, they had a creative writing class. So of course I took it and the teacher was horrible, beyond horrible. Oh. Like the only writing examples she showed us was her work. Oh. I know. I was go. like, this doesn't seem right. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but she, whenever I would turn in a story and I knew I wasn't horrible. Like I've been doing this, I've been writing a very long time. And I, at that point, like for myself and whatever, I'm like, I'm pretty good for being in high school lady. (laughs) Right. Like I'm not horrible, but she would like, I mean, I got good grades and everything with that. Like I refuse to not get an A in a class. I'm very stubborn that way, but she, um, it was always like, you need to write this way. So no matter what kind of story it was, it was like, this is good, but it should be done this way. And it was her way, no doubt. (laughs) Right. And by the end of that semester, like uh, my like best friend took the class with me too. And um, she wrote really dark, darker stuff, same as myself. And we were like, who the hell is she? (laughs) And then we said some not nice things about her, but um, it was just like, I, I can't write your way. I write my way. Right. Stay out of my head. (laughs) I I think I carried some of that with me as I grew as a, as a writer. And there is no one way anyway. It's like, how boring would that be if every author had the same style? What would be the point of there being more than one, just one eternal unimind of an author? Like what would be the point? The high mind author. Thank you. Where we just all go on to a giant uh, we are database. bored. That's it. Right. Yeah. And we just, and we all collectively write one story. And then when that one's done, we start the next one. 
Right. Yeah. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. So along the same line, same vein, pantser, plotter, or planser? Pantser, most of the time. I'm trying, and I've tried many times and failed every time <laughs> to plot because I keep thinking it'll be easier if I plot. But the problem is when I plot, whatever I plot doesn't happen because I start writing and then I'm on the, I'm on the right path. I'm following the map. And then the character's like, ah, fuck this. <laughs> and they just throw the map away. And then I'm on my own again anyway. Right. And so then for anyone listening right now, this is your first episode with us and you happen to not be an author and you're like, what is this pantser of which you speak is a, a shortened version of an expression as writing by the seat of your pants, as opposed, you know, as you go along, you're developing the story versus someone who's a plotter makes a whole outline first and then starts writing the story. And the other word Shane said there at the end, planter is someone who's kind of a hybrid. I think most people would know this, but you never know. Some of yeah. some of Misha's yeah. readers yeah. might listen now and have never heard us before and don't listen to all this author talk. Jargon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard other authors talk about uh, who are pantsers talk about if they try to plot the story, then the story stops talking to them. It's it, 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 it's it's as if when you sit down to write and you start engaging and actually writing the story, it's like a movie reel playing in your head. And it, I guess it's more energizing for, for a pantser if the movie is playing for the first time and you're you're like, you're like almost discovering it, like you discover the story when you first watch a movie. Whereas with the plotter, you've already plot. You're the director, and you've plotted it all out. You know where it's going to be at all these different beats, and uh, you're just writing to get to that last scene. Uh, I know some pantsers have said if, when they try that, it destroys the story for them. Um, yes, because it's if I sit down and I already know every single thing that's going to happen and when. Well, then I've already told myself the story. Why am I doing this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in my head, I'm like, I've already done this. I've already told myself this story. I'm bored. Move on. Like, cause I, so I can't do that. So when I try to outline or I try to plot, I have to be extremely loose. Like I just have to have like a, a list of like, I just want these things to happen. And then I beg my characters, please, <laughs> please let me just have these things happen. I don't care when I, and you can determine how I just, please, please let me get these things in there. <laughs> That's about love, as good as I can do now. <laughs> I love that. I The whole concept of your character sitting inside your head going, no, fuck you. And that happens all the time. Yeah. I think I'm going to start. I'm going to conduct a seminar on doming your own characters. Yeah, seriously. Like, I feel like no, I'm the no. only person who does this. And like, I, I need I need to start like make a YouTube video or something. Yeah. Because every time oh. the subject comes up, I'm like, what is good? Like, those characters need to fucking obey. I am the Lord of their universe. <laughs> I am their one creator. And... Yeah, I'm too weak. Need to behave. I'm too weak because, and then if I don't listen, they don't talk to me. I am completely at their mercy. It's horrible. And, and you're not the first person to say that. And I find it fascinating. I mean, I thought of myself as a pantser only because I never really plotted outlines to my stories. I just let them build organically, but I never felt like as an author, the characters were dictating to me. But you and other authors that I've talked to literally talk about, yeah, if I try to tell them, it's like they're like, oh, is that the way it's going to be? Well, no, nope, sorry, we're done. I'm not saying another word. And the story. Like they turn their back on you. It's yeah, horrible. Yeah. And the story's is out. It's an abusive relationship. <laughs> and yet see, here I sit. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I do truly believe that Eris does need to do that. She needs to have a uh, doming your characters 101. <laughs> Uh, uh, course that uh, pantsers can take, you know, not that it'll help or work, but I mean, it's worth a shot, right? I'm not saying that like when I'm even as a plotter, one of the weirdos, uh, I'm not saying that like somewhere in the thing, some ideas don't come up where I'm like, oh yeah, that'd be a good idea if I had this happen. But, but then after that, I go, okay, where can that be worked in? Can it be worked in with what I've got so far? But what's supposed to happen? And if the answer is no, it's like, okay, well, then it's not getting worked in. Or if it's like super important, maybe I'll try to make room for it somehow. 
But if it's not going to fit, I'm just, nope, that's not, we're not doing that. Or that's out of character for that person. It's not happening. And like, that's fucking it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I'm finding myself more and more, and we've had this conversation of not thinking of myself as much of a pantser as I am a planter, because I do actually do some degree of plotting. But um, it's still one of those uh conversations that we have with authors in our community that I just find fascinating when I hear when I hear uh, another author talk about yeah they 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 just shut up on me or, or they told me nope we're not doing that we're going to do this you wanted uh you wanted us to get together here ah, sorry no we're going to get together over here or or even worse I've you know I'm going to get together with this character not the one that you wanted me to get together with I'm like wow that's you're like madam can you not yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, that's that's pretty wild. That's that's a degree uh, and level of imagination uh, that's happening inside your head while you're writing that I just I really I truly find fascinating. You are large. You contain multitudes. Yeah, Misha, uh, multitudes. Misha, you're saying you is it exactly thirty books? So that's like a roundabout. It's a roundabout. I, I think I. You're still you're still shaming both of us mightily. Uh, yeah, with your number of books. Um. Because you are telling us, you know, this is your process, you kind of explore the story as you go. Um, you do write like certain types of themes in your books that are, that are, you know, these are the kinds of themes that you like to write about as an author. Um, do you find that being, you know, umpteen books in that to some extent, there are certain things that get easier in terms of like, I'm trying to think of an example, like if you have a certain trope that you tend to like that you've written, you know, more than one time because it's fun for you and your readership likes it too. Um, do you find that be because you've done it before, it gets easier to organically kind of sense when turning points are coming? Like, you know, this, oh yeah, this is the good time to have them get pissed off at each other. Or this is the good time to have this, you know, uh, heroine run away and now the guy's got to catch her or whatever. Like does, or is it always just a big, it's, it's just typical every time. It's, it's, oof. Here's the thing. Okay, you, so you know how there's, there's beats that we're supposed to hit? Sure, I, I know hit. of this, but I like yes. barely look at that at all, but sure. I, I can think of like two of them I think about, but that's about it. But yeah. I cannot look at those rules and take them seriously. I have a hard time taking them seriously. There's a, there's a couple of them that I go, okay, I did it. Yay. But like, if I don't do it, like I'm not going, oh, well, I got to revise this whole thing and cut out a bunch of words here and put some stuff like, yeah, I, I'm not going to murder like, myself with that stuff if that's not how the story's going. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was red. I think it was red. I tried very hard to stick to the beats and I just, I still pantsed it, but like I had the, the, the sheet up taped to my computer and I was like, okay, at this point now they need to do this. Okay. Let's go make them do that. And that it was red. Because after I finished it, I threw the entire book away. Oh my oh, god! Oh wow! I just I wrote the, my, my I wrote chest caved thing. in a little bit right now when you just said that. I'm just, huh. And I'm I was a little plotter heart. It, and I was like, "This is the worst thing I've ever written." And then I had someone read it just to solidify that I was right. And yes, I was right. <laughs> so I'm like, "This is going in the trash," and I'm starting over again. And these beats oh, can go away crap. because I can't. That is way too much structure for me. I can't do it. I've never thrown out a whole book. I just like oh, I like my right now. I'm processing my whole reality. Yeah. I'm like oh my god. Like and it, well, I shouldn't say it's not deleted. It's still on my computer. Well, but, but I, I mean, mean like just scrap it and yeah. not scrap the whole thing. Anything. Scrap the whole thing. The whole seventy thousand words gone. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> my lungs are collapsing. Okay. Yeah, I but couldn't. It, it was it was the worst. It was the absolute worst. So I can't use like even the three act structure does not compute in my head while I'm writing. Like that doesn't. I have the closest I come to that. That is, I usually get to a certain word count because I about I know about how long I want the book to be. I usually know what word count like when I'm around that word count. Like okay, they can stop fighting and now they need to start falling for each other. That's about it. <laughs> so you're like, they, they can stop fighting and start falling for it. So do you do uh, like as enemies to lovers, one of your tropes you enjoy? Yes. Like what, what are some of the other ones? So I love it when they don't like each other to begin with. They have to I do too. That, um, so, good. so definitely enemies to lovers. I do like friends to lovers, but I find that more difficult because they're already starting off at a point where they like each other. Mm -hmm. So I have more trouble with that one, but I do like that one. I love the overprotective alpha dominant type guy. Mm -hmm. 
I just, I love it. Like the more overprotective, like to the point where like red flags are flying everywhere, but I'm like, I don't <laughs> care. I don't care. Bring it. I think we all more. in this, uh, in this, uh, internet space personally right now can agree that, uh, the problematic stories we, we like many of them. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't care. I know, I know this is not how people are supposed to act in real life, but I'm reading about it anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah so I love those. And I, I'm a sucker for a hero that saves the damsel. Like I'm just a sucker for it. So that will almost always happen. And I like, I were, I struggle with that because I'm like, it's 2021. It's like the age of the woman, but yeah. In my day to day, like no one mess with me. I will take you down, but <laughs> you gotta write what you like. Right. But I'm a sucker for it. So I'm like, it's, it's going to happen. Do you consider your books dark? Like it, it, overall, your whole catalog, would you be like dark, dark ish? Like I thought, you know, looking at some of your titles, I'm like, well, this, this is probably dark, but you know, overall, would you say? I would say dark ish. Okay. I have some that are darker than others, but I would say dark ish. I feel that way too. Only because there's, there's plenty of captive stuff and yeah. kidnapping and that yeah. kind of thing. Um, there are a few really dark ones, but I say overall dark ish, like dark gray not black dark gray are there are there any like uh have you ever found yourself in a situation where you you were you know i don't know maybe in a box set or something uh and you you're like okay i'm gonna do this box set but this isn't a genre i'm like super into but i'm like okay i gotta meet the criteria so i gotta do you know you're still gonna like it but it's not like this is not where my heart is at like have you ever found yourself in that like there's something like "Mm, i don't really want to write this um no, I mean, I've written in some anthologies or in like people's worlds where it's not my typical, but I still really enjoyed it. Like uh, Simmer is mm-hmm. taboo, pitch black, not romance, horrific, but I loved writing it and it kind of scared me how easily it came to me. It was a fun departure. Yes. Is yeah. there, are there genres and stuff that you uh, like you avoid? You're like, mm, I don't like writing this trope or I, you know, this isn't for me. I don't, you know, it's doesn't mean uh, that it's well, bad. Definitely it's just nothing like, sweet. Meh. like nothing sweet. I hmm. just don't like where they get along the whole time. They just happen to fall in love while they're getting along. Like, what no. is that? But you've written an entire body of Amish romance. And I'm, <laughs> I, I'm confused here that those were very sweet. You, okay, wow. Here's the thing with like, Amish romance, like not actual Amish romance, but like when I think about Amish romance, I very quickly turn it into some sort of dystopian. <laughs> yeah, uh, dude, me Harold, too. Hand, hand which hand is not like the Amish lifestyle. So I don't mean like that's not, not probably not that any Amish person would be listening, but just in case, like that's not nothing against any of those things. But in my brain, I take something that's sweet and and innocent, and then I, I twist it into these things that it's yes. not. So I like because like I'm dying to write a cult book you don't under like i'm dying to do it but it, that's also something that like i need to approach that while like it is my full passion because i know when i do it i'm going to dive head first into it and adore everything about that story but i'm dying to do it damn girl i would totally co-write that with you except for the fact that like you'd unfriend me after because i'm i <laughs> oh I'm my god confident that i am gonna i would that's why I've never co-written with anybody because I know that that person will just stop talking to me. Like I'm, I, I see myself and I know I'm an egregious pain in the ass. So I don't want to like expose anyone else to this bullshit. Like, but see, me so sir, sorry. Back me up here. See, that's poisoning the well before you've even tried. That's but I'm a plotter and I will uh, like, it's not even like I've tried to pants and the same kind of where Misha's her vibe is like, if I write it, if I make an outline ahead of time, I feel like I'm bored because I've already told myself this story. And, you know, of course, Shane, you and I have talked about this many times on, on here. Um, I, on the other hand, if I don't have any structure at all, and I definitely like some more than just super basic, I go, I am just in the dark and I don't know where I'm going. And I refuse to step out because I'm not stepping off a ledge here. You know what I mean? Like I have to know where I'm going or I literally won't take the first step. And so, like, I'd probably have to work with another plotter if I ever co-wrote anything. I don't know. Have you co-written, Misha? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I would say if you if you do co-write with someone, there are some things that you have to be on the same page with. And, like, if you're, a, like, a very strict plotter, then 
you probably would hate me because after like chapter three, I'm like, yeah, we're not doing that. Sorry. <laughs> Here's the chapter I wrote that totally deviates us from the entire plot. Sorry. Yeah. And it's like, I, I think you're a wonderful human being, but I know we would like writing process. Like for, we would give each other anxiety. Oh my goodness. And it's like yeah. not even intentional. It's just, we both like have to like, I think we writing, you work alone so much. You just develop this like little ecosystem of one person and nothing can come in and like mess with any one ingredient or suddenly the whole thing collapses. <laughs> okay. But, but still, you, if you found a plotter that you knew was a plotter and that you could uh, work together on that aspect of how you write the story, meaning you plotted it all out, then in fact, unless you give it a try, you will never know whether you can co-write with someone or not. Now, I'm not saying, like you said, that that means you can co-write with just anyone, but you, you, you don't give yourself nearly enough credit, I, I think, until if you I actually... had a plotter buddy and we both wanted to write the same thing and work on it together, I would not turn down the opportunity necessarily. I'm just saying there seem to be a lot less of us. And I'm just like, you know, if it comes out, I think me, there's more of you than you think. There, there yeah. are more of you than you think. So the, 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 any listeners out there, if you are an author and you're a plotter, um, Eris Adderley, that's and me and Livia are going to write a book. That's it. Livia, there you go. Listen, Livia Grant. I'm, I'm here in. with me. I, I'm I don't already think I've hit. ever seen anyone plot. She, like, it's like her job. Like, yeah, <laughs> it is. It's like my job. I'm gonna send you one of my outlines one time. You're gonna be like, get the hell out of here. You're gonna get you're gonna the hives. Right. <laughs> I mean, she has like backstories to backstories to backstories of characters. That like, I remember she told me when she looked. No, I know when their birthday is. I know where they were born. I know their parents. I'm like, I don't even know if my characters have parents. <laughs> Like I'm somewhere in the middle on that. I like <laughs> will write stuff down as I think of it in like a separate document, but I don't necessarily sit there and think of it all ahead of time. Well, it depends on what I'm so writing. intricate. And the, what amazes me is like, she's, she's so much of it. And then when you read her stuff, it's like, you know, I, I when I read it, I'm like, I know there's an entire book in her notebook somewhere with more information than what's in this book, but her characters are very well-rounded because she does all of that. And I, but like I said, like I get in halfway through the book, I'm like, wait, are there, their parents alive? <laughs> Did they have a childhood? Do they have family? <laughs> she's got a whole genealogy going like, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> We love you. I Olivia. just finished we think a work. Awesome. I just I just finished a project. I don't even know what season the whole <laughs> book has taken place in. So like I have to like I have little brackets and they're like put in the weather. Like when you go, I go back <laughs> to figure out like what part of the year is this taking place? <laughs> This is all, this is like, this is why I love these conversations because it's again, it's a lonely process for us. We sit here and do this by ourselves. And I like to talk to other authors and hear what they do because it, we're all kind of, you know, some of us, we find little, Oh, I do that too. Or then other stuff you hear your author buddy and you're like, that is completely foreign to me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so it's, it's it is like, to me, I have to know, I mean, I don't know about season. I mean, I usually probably kind of know what season it is, but it's like, I have to know what the lighting in the room looks like first before I can start right. That's stupid, but I'm just like, when is it happening? Is it, it, is it, it makes dusk? Sense. Is it midnight? Are they in a room? Are the lights on? What kind of lights are, you know what I mean? Like it's stupid shit that like, but if I don't know it, it's like, I can't visualize the environment. And therefore again, I'm in the dark and I cannot, but I think there's no also stage like for my actors. That plays into like, like you're very good at setting the scene and yes. setting like the world. And then you can tell in my stories that I don't know what time of day it is they're talking because I don't tell you what time of day it is that they're talking because and I don't know. it may fucking not even be important, really. I mean, like, is, is does it matter if it's nighttime? No, what matters is what these two characters are telling each other and how they feel about it. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes like, who cares? And, and I would argue the point, Misha, that when it is important, um, you do put it in there because like I'm thinking of one scene in particular, and I mentioned it earlier at the very beginning of the an Blacklight Anthology story where you set that scene at night and you you actually use some of the settings, uh, uh, the, 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 the bar lighting uh, in the window, uh, the neon and him turning it off as as a way of setting the scene. So it's not always that you don't know, but. Right. By the same token, yeah, there are other times when I'm sure yeah, I'm thinking back to uh, oh the the one story about the two detectives, and yeah, there 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 were times there where it could have that this what was taking place could have been at night or it could have been at 
uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And what's also like, sometimes I do know, like in my head when it's playing, I can envision it, but I forget to tell the paper. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like I, was, I got it, like, I need to put it there. It's great that it's up here, but it needs to be on the Down. paper. Right. <laughs> when you, right. do you know what your character's faces look like in your head? That's the thing that like makes me think I want to ask you this. I do, but I, I'm really, and that's another thing. I don't describe people very well in my books. I don't either, but I will say like, I've, I've seen those kind of threads floating around. Like, what do you see when you are writing? Like, do you, and I don't like see faces. I really don't like, not at all. I see faces, but the problem, like it, with the hero and it's maybe it's because like, I'm very attracted to my heroes. I know exactly what he looks like and they're all pretty much the same. <laughs> but like, I, I'm attracted is... to them too. I just don't see their face. Like I might see a general archetype. Like if the person has a, sh has sharp features or like, you know, something like that, but I don't like really sit there and actually be, I can, I can't see a person in my head. Yeah. But you do I, Misha. I do. Well, that's cool. The female, I don't see as clearly. Do you think it's because you feel like you're looking out through her eyes? I, yes, yes, I, I do. <laughs> I think that's like, because, but, um, and I often don't remember what color eyes I give them. <laughs> and I, so I have the other thing I put That's like, what beta readers are for. Come yeah, on. Right. I, can't remember. I mean, I've changed eye color and I know all authors have done that. You change eye colors halfway through. Like they used to have blue eyes, ah, contacts. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but I do see them because it, like Shane said, it's like, it's like a movie and it's playing like their facial expressions, but I just have a harder time of getting it out of my head and onto the paper. I wish I did that better. That's really do you, do you write both POVs? I do. So we, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but you've written in several anthologies. And I know I've mentioned like the Blacklight anthology because that's the one that I wrote with you. And I alpha read your story, but you've written in other anthologies uh, prior to that. Um, do you prefer that short form sort of storytelling over like a long form full length book or vice versa i like if it's my story and it's going to be only my story i i prefer full length but if i'm if i'm being given a topic or a theme then shorter is better oh and why is that i don't know that that's kind of weird isn't it like <laughs> Like, do you think it's because you feel limited when you're given like uh, uh, the brackets around the story? Like it has to happen in this club and it has to be two people that are going to do X, Y or Z. Or is it is it how you picture it in your head? Well, OK, so this limits me as to what I'm going to uh, uh, cover in the course of the story. I think it's, it's going to sound really weird. When I do an anthology, and so there's usually there's usually a theme, like Blacklight's different in that there's a theme, but there's also very specific things that have to happen, like the timing and things like that. Right. But I've actually found to be the easier um, anthologies to write in because I'm giving being given those specific parameters. But in any anthology, because it's not my world, I'm not creating the whole thing. And it's almost like it's an assignment I'm being given. Mm -hmm. But it's not in a bad way. Like, it's not like if I had to write, if I was always told, like, this is what you have to write, that would drive me crazy. But with an anthology, I think because it's it has that assignment feeling, even though I, I really do love writing in anthologies, but because it has that feeling to it, it's almost like I perf I'm glad that it's short because I don't have to do as much um, building. Like, I, I don't have to create a whole world. It's already there. You don't have to be responsible to... for the, all the setting, like all of the, I mean, you know, I, I was, I, I think we were, I think we were both in the roulette war anthology. Yes. And it's like, I didn't have, I don't think I had anything that happened outside. I had like one scene that happened outside of the, outside of Blacklight and that everything else was in there. And that was all in this enormous, you know, world Bible document that, um, you know, Livia Grant and Jennifer Benet gave us. And so on one hand, I, there's the constraints. You're like, oh, well, I can't do this because they don't have whatever in the club. But on the other hand, you're like, oh, God, I don't have to think of all this stuff. You know what I mean? I, there's people's names that work here. I can just go with what they said. Right. Yeah. And it's a fun challenge, I think, to like. It is. And it's also of a blank canvas. It's like, here's the tools. Make something. Exactly. Yeah. And the, and the anthologies always give you a word count that you got to stick to anyway. So it's not. 
but <laughs> <laughs> every yeah. anthology I've ever been in, I'm always going to, but I'm sorry, mine's so long. <laughs> Livia was like, it's okay. Thank God. I'm not going to be the only one with like a 28,000 word story. <laughs> yeah. But I also like, it's, it's, see, this is like, like the nerd in me because it feels like an assignment, but not in a bad way. I just want to emphasize that. <laughs> it's like a little a challenge. Way. It is. But I also, I like, I, when I go to it, I'm like, I want to get an A on this. <laughs> so <it> has to- <laughs> Heck yeah. I'm just such a nerd. But whatever we have to do to motivate ourselves, right? Like whatever. I mean, Shane and I, I think the last episode we put up was about writer's block and motivation was one of those topics. And I, you know, I said this jokingly, but one of the things that motivates me is I don't want to disappoint people. So like something in an anthology, for example, and there's a deadline, like that will really light a fire under my ass. Whereas when I'm writing for myself, you know, things tend to get stretched out in this process. But it's like, when I know that, like, if I don't get this to them on time, I'm going to be really making people unhappy with the situation. I'm like, because if, if I, if, if I upset people and they're disappointed in me, like my little, my entire little world will crumble. And I, that's probably Mm -hmm. not healthy. And I probably need therapy for that. But (laughs) in this situation, I am using my you know, own mental health problems too. <laughs> to motivate you to exactly. finish a story. Well, you know, there every you cloud has a silver lining and you found mm-hmm. it. Yeah, like exactly. That. Exactly. Um, another thing we touched on earlier in, in our conversation uh, a little bit was uh, romance writing community as a whole. Uh, mm-hmm. And I know we discussed it and you said uh, very clearly that you found the community to be a very uh, empowering community. Mm-hmm. Um are there things about the community that you find uh, in particular to be more empowering than others? Or is there something about the community as a whole that you're like, now that I'm a part of this, I don't know if I could live without it. Uh, uh, and whether that be like online uh, interactions or, or real life interactions when you go to a, a book signing or whatnot. Uh, friendships that you've made is is there anything in particular that stands out uh above the others um i would say interactions with other authors like sounding boards okay i don't think i could live without that because like era said we're like it's a very lonely activity that we do we're the only ones who's sitting at our computer and putting these words on the pages so when i come up to a point where like i don't really know what to do I it was like there's several options open to me and I'm horrible at making decisions. So that's part of that too. But like, so there's several options. It's so helpful to have people that you can be like, look, this is the situation and this is what I'm thinking of doing, but what do you think? And like, it's, so it's very helpful to have that. I don't think I could get as much done as I do without that. Amen. And and do you feel like that uh, is something you discovered during the course of becoming an author, so to speak, uh, as opposed to when you were just writing for yourself? Uh, like you didn't realize it back then. And now that you do realize it, like, like you just said, it's one of those things like, I don't think I could go back. Oh, yeah. I don't. When I first started writing, I didn't think that anyone would ever give me the time of day. Like, why would anybody give me any information? Like, don't be lazy. Go look it up yourself. You know, like I just I had that mentality, like, no, one's going to want to just tell you things. What's wrong with you? (laughs) And like, but now that I'm like, oh, I have people that I can like ask their opinion and they're going to give it to me and they're not going to shun me and think that I'm a a piece of crap. So that's um, yeah. So that's but at the beginning, I didn't think that's the way it was. Right. But then once I'm like, oh, my God, people are very generous with their time and information. And yeah, so no, I don't, yeah. And you get burned on the internet in general because outside of here, just in general, there's a, just Google it. Why are you at like, yeah, I know we're obviously we're all on Facebook. We all see each other on there. And I always see like just on people's regular profiles, somebody will be like, Hey, does it, you know, any of my friends, do you know about blah? And so somebody in the comments, just Google it. Why aren't you Google it? I'm like, maybe I just want to have some interactions with some human beings that I kind of know, uh-huh. like, why are you so aggressive? Like, why are you so angry? But like, you feel that. And so it's already in you like, oh, people are going to be annoyed if I just ask them stuff. And right. so, and so you don't, um, when, and the reality is within this community, at least the likelihood is, is that those people are fewer and further between than they are in say other communities, like the gaming community where, you know, that is definitely Google it, um, do the work yourself, or I can't remember. There's another term that gets bandied about, um, 
And well, plus the, that's a very competitive community. So I think there's always this, like, there's a little bit of this, like, who can respond to this question the most aggressively yeah. and show how they're the alpha of the, of the, in the room right now. You know what I mean? Like, and they're going to do that by being, why don't you just Google it? Like, you know what I right. mean? Like that's the, do, that's, that's the, you know. Yeah. Do the work yourself. Leave. I remember I once, I, I don't remember. Yes, I do. I do. I do. I do. It's coming to me. Indebted Heart. That's the book. There was a description that I was trying to say, and I still don't know the name for it. Like, you know, there's like, when you have a spot between in a diner, the kitchen, or, and then the other side, you know, where the, like, uh, the waitresses stand? Yeah. Like, I don't know what that's called, yeah. that, that thing. Oh, the pass through. Where okay, you, you're okay, talking about the pass through where you, you where the cooks will pass through the food or set the food up on that little counter uh waiting for the yes. waitresses to pick it up to give to the customers right that's it, yes yeah the pass I, could not, I did not know what it was called and so i was googling it because you know first you try to google things and i could not it was not answering me in a way that was satisfactory sometimes like, you don't these, even know how to ask the question exactly right. and that's what it was i didn't like i couldn't verbalize that question like, oh, how I just asked that. Google was like, what the hell are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah. So I went on Facebook, not my other Facebook. I went on my personal Facebook and I asked the question, what do you call, you know, the thing? And my cousin, my own cousin was like, just Google it. I'm like, I, I did. Like, I did. You're like, uh, that is not an answer to my question. So I'm going to need you to like, shush. Yeah. Like, that's not a helpful response right now. Don't bully me. Why didn't I think of that? What is this Google yeah. of what you speak? Well, and that was that was kind of my in my internal thought. I was like, oh gee, thanks. Why didn't I think of that? Gee like, Willikers. Like, yeah. But yeah, but in, in the romance world, you can just ask the question, someone's going to answer you. Yeah. I mean, that has been my experience, is that you know, I I was gonna say nine times out of ten, but it's, it's essentially ten times out of ten. Someone will say, well, here is, you know, what the, what that's called, or I have a friend or whatever. And you, you're going to get a, a, you know, polite response and, yeah. and get the information. And again, that's part of why uh, I, I think we all find this community so empowering is because it's not that competitive nature. Like, you know, when you're playing uh, a video game, uh, the gaming boards, which are are rife with trolls and people whose response is, uh, you know, you need to do the work. And, uh, it's like, no, I just want an answer to a question. That's all. It's, it's and I'm very confused. I wish we could like, I don't know, talk to people without being afraid to be yelling at us <laughs> for yeah. asking them the question. But like, I don't understand why other genres don't be the same way. Like why, what's stopping them? Like, do they not like, we all take that. Well, I don't say we all, but like the mentality really is that what is it, the a rising tide raises all boats or whatever. Um, I actually have an opinion about this and I don't know, like, you know, the romance community is, um, sorry, Shane, but predominantly women are writing the books. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of male romance writers, but if there was a scale, we'd, we'd, this, we just flip over on top of y'all and squish all y'all. Like it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, true. sometimes true. I wonder, uh, you know, I, I feel like things are moving in a good direction, but I, I was, I just, I wonder a lot of us ladies, uh, we, we, we just were socialized to cooperate with each other and with people. Like we were socialized to be helpful and like make others have a nice experience, like to be concerned for the, and I feel like not that necessarily got guys, like when we were growing up, we're socialized to not do those things, but it, like, it wasn't actively, Hey, cooperate, share, be nice. Like you know, help your, you know, sibling, help that person. And like, it's not as much as girls, like for a girl, I think you're actively like even punished or chastised. If you don't do that stuff, like, Hey, you're not being nice. You need to, you know, you need to be more helpful. You need to blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's ingrained in us. I feel like from a young age to be cooperative. And so like in a community where it's mostly women, maybe that just happens more because of those two things at one time. I don't know. Like, I kind of, I wonder that. I wonder that because a lot of the other kind of fiction genres there, there's a lot of genres where a lot of writers are men. And like, I don't know, I, I think men are not like socialized to cooperate. They're socialized to compete more. Yeah. In well, general, it, in general, there's in always gen exceptions, blah, blah, blah. But right. right. In, in general, though, it is a very men are socialized to be competitive. So there's a uh, a level of dominance 
factoring in there. Like, you know, you have to establish who's the alpha and then the alpha determines whether or not they're going to parse out that information. The captain of the football team, the CEO of the company, whatever, which is again, I it's funny because I just had a a very similar conversation with uh, uh, someone else earlier today um, where that that very subject came up. And I was like, yeah, I feel like when I'm dealing with a group of men that that I have to be very careful about how I ask questions uh, or ask for information, um, because it is all about, well, first of all, I'm going to exert my dominance over you and, and tell you, wow, you're stupid because you don't already know that. But now I'll tell you, uh, give you the information. Whereas when I've had a woman boss, it's more like, OK, well, let, uh, let me give you the information now. Do you, you know, do you understand this? Do you know why you need this information? Is this information, uh, did I present it to you clearly? Because they want you to succeed. Because obviously, if you're doing it in a work environment, you succeeding means they succeed. Uh, but with men, it is, it tends to be much more aggressive. It's like, well, oh. I think also men are socialized that if you ask for help or you show mm-hmm. in some way that I don't know a thing, that you're going to, you're weak. Now yeah. people, everybody's going to think you're weak now. And so it's like, you got to like not show that or you're going to, you know, there's going to be a problem on this social yeah. ladder that you're on. So it's yeah. like, I, you know, again, I don't write in other genres. I, I mean, I have settings that could cross over some different things, like some fantasy and stuff, but I'm still primarily in our market. Um, so I don't necessarily see all of what goes on out there, but I don't even know if as many people are asking so many questions or feeling comfortable to ask all these questions. Like, when I started and I was putting up stuff on Literatica for free, and it's a fairly, I feel, even mix of people on Literatica. There's a lot of male, write- male writers, female writers, you know, non-binary writers, or everybody's on there. Um, but I very much, that's why I ended up on Facebook and started a group with my writer friends is because their forum, like, you couldn't ask anybody anything. Oh, my God. Like, you ask the simplest question and, like, the people who had been there forever would just, everybody would just come and it would be like, a dick measuring contest of who could most scathingly like, you know, mm-hmm. remind you that you're a newbie peon. You know what I mean? And it was yeah. just like, why is this fucking this? So it's like, I didn't even want to ask anyone anything because I knew that it was just, I would get no help and I would just get like mocked or, you know, people would be assholes to me. But yeah, whereas holy. then I ended up in Romance Landia and I was like, oh, people are so nice. What the hell? Like, not used to that. Well, and yeah. I think also like, I <laughs> like so many people read romance and romance readers are like voracious. Like they consume books like food. Like they want, I don't know how people read day. this many books, but they do, man. Holy man. Yeah, so a lot of books. we just don't experience, we don't feel the pressure of competitiveness. I think as some other genres. Yeah. It's not like we're all competing for like a, a much smaller piece of a whole pie. Right. Like we like we there's more to go around. So it's like, OK, it's just if I if I sell 20 books, it's not like Misha's going to sell no books. Like, right. Exactly. We'll also sell 20 books because those readers are thirsty. Yeah. And also like, yeah, because like I can't write a book a day. So how can I possibly satisfy a reader who reads a book a day? Like I can. I need help. I need my commu- the community to keep feeding them while I'm writing. And I need books to read shit. <laughs> right. And I wonder, so, but also that also like, because we want to help each other and we see it that way, like it's not competitive. Like you write a book to hold them over until my book comes out. And then my book will hold them over until your book comes out. But that also can go back to that we're like, we're helpful and we grew up being helpful. And that's, you know, part of it. Yeah. I think. It, wow. It, but it, it just plays into it. It definitely in my opinion, plays into it. And let's be, we write about relationships. So yeah. other than, you know, okay, in any genre, there's going to be folks that are like, you know, a, a tiny little bracket of people is, is literally just there to make money and they're turning out plot formulas, hiring a ghostwriter, whatever. And and whatever, like, I'm not knocking that, like get after it if it makes you a living. Um, but like, we write about relationships and we care about this stuff. Like th- these things are important to us in life. We are interested in like, how people interact. So of course, when there's a community of us, like we care about our relationships with our fellow authors and our readers. Like we want to help people. Like we want to have good things happen to our good friends that we love. So it's like, 
of course, when we see someone new and they're struggling, we're like, oh, hey, hang on, don't do that. That's a scam. Come over here. Let me tell you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yep. of course, we want to help people out because our whole freaking focus is relationships. Like, that's that's what we think about. So, and there definitely is that in this community where, like, when you see someone who's entering it and you see them maybe being led down a path that's not going to be beneficial, you do see people like just gently leading them back. Like, right. hold on. Sometimes not so gentle. No, 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 no. You come over right. here. Yeah. There's a cliff edge there. I'm going to need you to not do that because it's going to And suck. I think because <laughs> when I first started writing, I didn't know that how welcoming the community was. I did take some turns that were not beneficial. And had I really known how welcoming and generous everyone was, I probably would have been able to ask more questions and not have maybe made some decisions that I made, but live and learn, I guess a little bit too, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, that's all part of the process of being an author is that you, you know, you, you come into this uh, and you don't know everything and you quickly, or hopefully you quickly find out that there are people in this community that will help you. And then you, uh, you know, you're still going to make mistakes, but at least you're not going to be mocked and criticized and and looked down upon the way you would be in other communities. Definitely. Right. That's for certain. Um, so new books, new series. What's on the plate for Misha Stone? Well, I have, I finished writing the third book in my Reluctant Bride series. I just have to like do a lot of revision because it went off the rails so many places. I need to put everything back together. <laughs> but um, those are standalones, but they're like in the same they're the same family. So the the whole world is there's they're going to be three series within the whole world. So the the world starts with the Stashik family. That's the mafia brides. And so those three books are about the Stashik kids or people. And then the second series in that world is this one, Reluctant Rides. And that's the Kazmarek family. And that's, they're in New York. They're a Polish mafia in New York. And then the third series in the world, I'm going to start writing that as soon as I finish editing the this last book. And that is going to be, that's actually going to be, um, the first two were Polish mafia. The third one is going to be a Russian mafia. Hmm. And they are going to take place probably in, New York, but also Chicago, because they're going to also revisit the first two seasons of there. You'll visit the Stashiks and the Kazmierics and because they're all related in some fashion, but um, you can jump in and like taken by him and then you'll get three books of that family or you can jump in at um, Unwilling Pawn and you're with another family. Y'all, y'all want some mafia romance. You need to get on Misha's Amazon yeah. page because yeah, absolutely. it's all in there. I was looking today. I was like, mm-hmm. um, it, it, I know that there's this uh, like Kindle Vela has recently come out and there's been uh, I've seen several people talking about, oh, oh yeah, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. H- have you is that something you've even explored? Is it something you're even interested in? So I did explore it. I do have something on Vela. But, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, nah, no, no, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't go okay. there for me. Okay, we will go there we will for everybody discuss. else. Don't go there for me, <laughs> like because um, what I've learned very quickly as I was working on it is that I don't like it for ah. myself because it very quickly became well. First of all, to be to write that sort of story structure, you do have to plot at least more than I do. You have to know the arcs because it's, it's very, it's a very different way of writing than writing a book from beginning to end because it's serial writing. So every, yes. And so I, I watched a ton of videos on how to do it. I read books on how to do it. I'm like, okay. I, it took me an extremely embarrassingly amount of time to get my head wrapped around it. Like, I'm like, I just don't understand. I probably just asked somebody like, speak to me like I'm two years old because this is not working for me. I don't get it. So I did all of that. And then I I think I have seven episodes up. And then I was like, you know what? I hate this. I'm not having interesting. 
I am not enjoying myself at all. Like I set aside one day a week to work on the Vela, my Vela pro, um, uh, project because it's like every chapter was only like, I'm only going to have like 1500 words. I'm like, I can knock that out in a day. That's fine. So I'll do it one day a week and I'll just keep advancing it. And I, and I had a, all stock piled up before the Vela went live and everything. And, but I was just like, I was dreading that day. I was like, I'm not enjoying this. And if I'm not enjoying this, People are not going to enjoy reading this. Yeah. So I have it on pause and I'm not, I don't want to say that I will never do it because you never know one day I might wake up and like, you know, I'll give that a shot and it might work for me again. But I just didn't, I, I, it just felt too, I don't know the word for it. I want to say commercial, but that's not the word. It's like it's manufactured or just too forced because I had to, I had to have all these plot stuff out because you have to have this arc that goes across like this whole season and yeah, I take that 70,000 word thing that you just hid in your jar drive and start changing names and a couple of things and be like okay I'm gonna cut this up it's going on Bill <laughs> yeah 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 so it just it didn't it, it didn't really it didn't get my motor running so I turned okay. it off <laughs> exactly. and I'm a lazy writer and it just seemed like there was a lot of work in that <laughs> <laughs> this is already a lot of work. I don't need oh, no. <laughs> even more work piled on top of it. Um, I know this weekend we have a show coming up and I'm pretty sure you're there. Yep. Shameless. Uh, mm -hmm. What about other upcoming shows? Do you have, uh, this is a two part question. Do you have other shows that you plan on going to this year? And um, I know that we can all came out of uh, delightfully dirty in Dallas and COVID Uh kind of spring a nasty bug on a lot of people who were there. Um, has that impacted the number of shows that you've gone to? Of course, I know it has to uh, some degree because there were no shows whatsoever for a while there. Right. But coming as we are, quote unquote, coming out of it, um, do you feel like it's uh, that still has a, a greater impact on you uh, in terms of what shows you might be going to? Uh, no, I, I I'm. I want to get back to doing everything. So okay. I'm, I, I'm comfortable doing it as long as everyone's being as safe as possible. So if there are signings and they're, they're being safe, then I have no problems going. Um, this year, Shameless is my last one because there really wasn't a lot this year, that, at least that I knew about mm -hmm. that I could get into. And next year I have... Writers on the River, that's here in Illinois, that's in Peoria. I did that this year and I really like that one. They um they're they're very it's very well organized and um they actually do a lot of charity work through it through their uh signing. So I really did a it, it's it's a feel-good weekend. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Nice. Um so um I'm doing that one. I'm doing dirty and they're gonna be in Colorado next time, yes. right? So yeah. I'll, I'll is that the, that the deadly reality one? No, no, no. That's a De different one. De delightfully dirty in Dallas is now gonna be delightfully dirty in Denver, I believe, or something. Okay, like we gotta pick another D city, you yeah. guys. Get together, yeah. give me a list of names. Let's go. And then I'm going to Galena, Illinois at some point next year, too. So I and then um I don't know if I can say the other one, so I'll leave that. So there's four. I'm going to four. I can tell you about three. I'm not sure about the fourth one if I don't know two yet or not. Okay, cool. On the move. Yeah. Outstanding. And um, is there anything other than like a show that would be uh, writing related that you're uh, looking forward to doing or something new uh, that uh, you haven't done before for this coming year? The new year, that is. Uh, you mean like like in terms of like going places or doing things going places do, doing things promoting let's uh you know pr authors uh, we're constantly trying to find new ways to promote ourselves and i mean it's the part of the business side of this uh trade that we are into that um i know a lot of authors dislike uh but it, it's necessary I want my books to make me feel filthy not all that stuff yeah, yeah. exactly Here we are so, yeah, uh, I would say I would have brought Vela up during this, but um, because, you know, that's right now one of those things that, you know, it's new and exciting and a lot of authors are trying it. But I'm, I'm thinking like conferences, uh, different shows, um, online events, things like that. Anything along those lines? So far, no. No. OK. I, I told you I'm lazy. 
I don't think you're lazy at all. <laughs> Not lazy. Oh my God. Listen to you. Okay. <laughs> you're over there um, publishing how many books while you yeah, also have exactly. like a managerial I'm, role at a very intense day job. That is not a lazy person's life. Yeah, yeah but I don't have that job now. Yeah. But you did it one time, so you are definitely not lazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not lazy. You're just, you're like looking for maximum efficiency. So you're not trying to do extra stuff for no reason. And I feel yeah, yeah, Yes, that's what my, my daughter today said to me. We're, I was driving her somewhere and she called me lazy, but she did it in a very <laughs> nice way. So I appreciated that. She, she my said, husband refers to me as the busiest lazy person he's ever known. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You guys. She's like, you just don't like to, you know do anything and i'm like are you, are you calling me lazy and she, and she's like well i was trying to be nice about it i'm like oh, i appreciate that I, i'm i do like you were nice about it but just want to make sure that that was the yeah, message the, the, the like, message well, yeah. though is yeah you're lazy mom <laughs> um what about uh new story ideas something uh, that you've really wanted to do that's been burning in the back of your head but you just can't seem to get it rolling like the great white whale of a story you've always been striving to reach uh but seems to forever elude you is anything like that going on um, right now there is i want so my ever after series my fairy tale series is not complete and there, I have an idea for the fifth book that would then end that series, but I, it's like elusive. Hmm. I would love to finally like nail that down and get it done because I, I don't like that that series is out there and not done because there's one more character who he just needs a story and I just cannot get him to sit down with me. But that's kind of who he is, but he's really pissing me off because <laughs> come on already. But <laughs> okay. So there is that. <laughs> um I there was something else that I was gonna do next year. Well, so have you all heard of TikTok? Oh my gosh. This new thing. This yeah. Oh my god, it's the I'm I am on the TikTok, but I do not like I haven't put out videos. I, I don't have the stamina to like be putting out the volume of content on TikTok that you need to, to like have any kind of a presence. So I just go on there and lurk and laugh at people's cat videos and, you know, look at other stuff in on smut book talk. It is the devil. And I'm so I'm like, but I'm committed. I'm committed to trying to actually put a real effort into it. So that's been my thing lately. I'm gonna go find you on there and follow you. I'll be encouraging. If you do, you really, 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 really need to see the Halloween one I did. Because okay. I, did I totally am gonna in a costume and I think it's hilarious. I'm ready. My minor step everyone should see it. If I ever get back to it, it's like I need to focus. Like I've over the course of being on there learned that like you pretty much need to have a topic that your channel is about and stick to that because if you deviate, people just don't give a crap about those videos. Yeah, um, here's the problem with me. Also, I am scatterbrained. Like you have same. no idea how scatterbrained I am. Like, so you go to these writing conferences and they talk brand, right? You, we've mm -hmm. heard these talks. Like, yeah. Find your brand. I don't, my brand is that I'm crazy and that I am everywhere. <laughs> that's a good brand. And I can't sit down in the same place twice. So that's the problem with me. So like, that's not going to work for my TikTok channel. I just do whatever I find funny or like that I enjoy. Or I was that. trying that. And I was like, the, the most watched video on my TikTok is, is, has nothing to do with any kind of writing or romance thing. It is, I found a antique or vintage, well, let's say Nabisco saltine cracker box. And I took it home and I'm like, I bet this is like the same size as the new one. And it totally was. And they exact, all those four sleeves fit like right in there. And so I made a video showing the old one. And I'm like, oh, here's the new one. Look, it fits. And like, so that that has like a shit ton of views. And the rest of my videos, nobody gets it. I'm like the cracker box, huh? That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. Right. All right. That's, they're they're a little finicky. Yeah. You found your niche though. It's cracker that's, box. That's great. Antique yeah. vintage tins. That's my... Uh, that's what I'm going to start calling you now, the Cracker Box Girl. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the Cracker Box Girl? I mean, at least I get a talk? good nickname out of it. Yeah, Shit. I guess. I guess. <laughs> um, well, this is another perfect spot to segue into something that uh, we uh, talked a tiny bit about before. But you talked about TikTok. You used to have a uh, every Sunday a little video that you produced and would put on uh uh, Facebook called Sexy Sunday. And I know I personally subscribed to it and looked forward to it. Um, and then it kind of died off. And I assume there's reasons. 
Uh, probably some I'm lazy. <laughs> Shane's making it sound like it's her only fans. Like, tell us what happens in these yeah. videos. No, I I just assumed it had something to do with like COVID or uh, you know, maybe something personal. But um is is that what the TikTok is gonna be? Is like your new version of Sexy Sunday, or do you ever plan on going back to Sexy Sunday or uh anything like that? So TikTok is not gonna take over for Sexy Sunday. Okay. Because it's the devil. But <laughs> Um, I do want to go back to sexy Sunday. Sexy Sunday is not dead. It is okay. just, I don't like, it's just like out of my grasp at the moment. Like I, I like you don't have a of, bandwidth to deal with it right now. Right. And I, I sort of petered out of ideas and mm-hmm. then I just felt like, okay, just going on every week and saying like, okay, so this is what I did this week. And this is what I'm going to do next week. See ya. Like just didn't <laughs> seem... <laughs> it, it didn't seem content worthy. I'm like, why would people want to know what I did last week and what I'm doing next week? And then check in next week to see if I did what I said I was going to do. And the odds are I'm not going to do what I said I was going to do because I'm crazy and can't remember what I said I was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I do, I do want to go back to sexy Sunday because I did enjoy doing them. And I know my readers in my group um, did like them. Yeah. So I do need to get back to doing them. I just need to like actually like put my butt in the chair and come up with some things that will be actually entertaining for people. And what is the name of your Facebook group so people can stalk you? Yeah. Misha's Madhouse. Awesome. See, that's, that's your brand. Crazy. There you go. We're all a little mad. And I need to books. rebrand like somehow working with that. I'm a pain in the ass. I'm going to have to figure that out. Oh, please don't. For God's sake. I, I am the goddess of discord. So like almost like we're almost there. Yeah. yeah. I still can't convince them to give me nitro though. All right. Well, is there anything else uh, in the course of our conversation that we haven't touched on Misha that you'd like to touch on? I don't think so. Oh, wait. Yes. I'm yes, sorry. Yay. I forgot. They, uh, oh, what's it called? Christmas at the club. <laughs> Oh, yes. The anthology, the, the Christmas yes. anthology, club anthology. Yes, it's a Christmas anthology. It's out for pre-order now. I do not remember when it's supposed to go live because Presumably I get a brain and I don't remember things like that. <laughs> and I should, but it's coming up soon. So you definitely, that is a lot of talent that's in there. It's, um, yeah, it's a variety. It's not one world. So it's a variety of worlds, but, um, it's all Christmas stories. And my story in it is Christmas Ever After. It takes place in my Ever After world, like what I did there. And um, yeah, so if you've read, if anyone's read Beast, um, that is the first book in that series. Ellie and Ash are the main characters there. You get a sneak peek at what they're up to, but the story itself is about um, two brand new characters. A but Beast Ever So Hot. Yeah. But presumably uh, it's on Amazon for pre-order or is it, it wide? Is. Just Amazon right now? It's just on Amazon. I believe it's okay. going, it's going, it'll be uh Kindle unlimited. I believe it's Christmas at the club, Christmas at the club. And there are, there are a lot of, uh, including yourself, a lot of incredible authors. It looks like it's going to be an outstanding anthology. Yeah. So. We looking at like eight, nine, like, there's one of those, what's like 20 authors. Like how, like it, how big, how big is this? How girthy? I don't think it's like unmanaged unmanageably big i believe it's like 10 yeah, yeah. And, it, and i think it's because like we talked about uh, uh before it's because it's for authors that have a club based series uh it it it, it uh it, it, if you have a series that you've done that's you know i don't know in if a pdsm it's, type club yeah, situation and it, 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 or even whether uh peripherally or what um but that's uh, tip uh that's in general what they're looking for uh for the authors that they uh, invited so like uh stronghold um black light uh th- those are the kinds of uh, uh series and authors that that got invited to it so it i'm really 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 looking forward to it because a lot of those i know the club uh and it- go ahead it goes live November 30th. Okay. Nice. Okay, good. All right. Oh, and it looks like there's, oh, there is more. There's more people than I thought. There's 17 stories. Oh, wow. Nice. It's a good selection. Yeah. You That's see kind of fun in anthology there? too, because, hey, if one story's not for you, probably another one's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. 
Well, Misha, I want to thank you so much for coming here and being with us tonight and letting us pick your brain and, and talk with you. It has been a pleasure. Um, and I hope that we haven't <laughs> bored you or put you on the spot too much. Or uh, Definitely you... not. This was a lot of fun. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I loved you already. And now I love you even more. Yes, and I don't exactly. even know how it's possible. You know, like I'm such an introvert. I never message you. I'm such a quick dick. But like, I still, <laughs> still think you're awesome. You are. You definitely are. And I'm going to see you Friday night and Saturday. Um, and uh, I'm going to make you as uncomfortable as I possibly can, because that's what I enjoy doing in real life is I'm making you. Uncomfortable. It. Yeah. Good. 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 I'm glad Just to get that. some candy corn on discount. Though, you know what? Um, Why don't you be you quiet? About no. Oh, my no, God, no. Shane. I can't I, fr- I cannot believe I didn't send it to you. So I was at the mall oh, with my, my kids God. and we were in line. I don't remember what store it was. It was one of those stores that I'm I'm too old to, to shop at. But <laughs> they had, um, so we're standing in line and they had like these scratch and sniff underwear boxers, which, oh my God, they're a thing. But, Misha? Uh, no, no. Hey, listen. And it was candy corn. No. <laughs> yes. There were candy no. corns. And then where the penis pocket is, that's what my, my kids call the part where the- mm-hmm. you know, Well, I'm calling it pocket. that now. So the penis pocket was- <laughs> a big candy corn and we're sitting in line and my daughter points it out and she's laughing at it. I'm like, Oh my God, I think Shane needs these. No, and she's like, what? I'm like a no. friend of mine. He totally needs these. No. And she goes, well, get it for him and give them to him for Christmas. No. And I was like, I don't think his wife is going to like me sending him underwear. So, <laughs> but- Oh no, 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 no. Sin would find it hilarious. And the, 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 the really bad thing is the thing that, that, that really makes this a big no is that she would insist that I put it on. See, now I regret. She'd be like, I'm taking a picture and putting it on your Facebook. So I took a picture of it and then I never, I meant to send it to you. And then I meant, but I never did. And now I don't know where it is on my phone because I have a horrible phone. But good, the good, and let's just leave it at that because that's no, I'll where find it. I'm going to no. find it. Maybe, maybe I can still find them online. Mm, no, 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 and I'll send them to I'll send them to Sin for Christmas, and I'll be like, "Here's my gift to you. I hate Put you these so on much chain. right now. I don't. I can't even begin to describe it. You know, I was going to say, uh, please tell our listeners where you can be found, but right now, no, I don't. People who don't need to know where you can be found. No, I want um, people to, to contact me and tell me if I should do this. So you can contact me on Facebook and you can go to my readers group, Misha's Madhouse, where we're all mad for books, you know, and um, I don't do Twitter anymore because, yeah, um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on <laughs> TikTok and I have a website, MishaStone.com. All right. There you go. All these places where people should go and tell you not to send me candy corn underwear of any kind. Where the penis pocket is of the candy corn. Yeah, exactly. I need to emphasize that because that was hilarious. Penis pocket sounds like a really like just like a (laughs) failed attempt at a frozen food marketing campaign. A hot pocket. A hot pocket that you put on your It was like a translation error. Like it was supposed to be sausage, but there was like a language gap between the marketing departments on two continents. Anyway. Oh my God. That's horrible. All right. Penis pocket. (laughs) All right. Well, again, Misha. See, now, if you, you do, if you use oh. that term and you make any money, my daughter who who says that oh. she's gonna want her cut because yeah. I will get. I will send her. I don't think any dude wants to hear penis pocket and then she gets her cut like that. <laughs> don't get you things that are not supposed to happen in the same. Yeah, paragraph. you do not want those phrases connected in any way, shape, yeah. or form. No. All right. Well, again, Misha, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me. All it was right. fantastic talking to you. Um. The Not Safe for Work Romance podcast, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, and YouTube, and you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, We can also be found on Twitter at Romance NSFW. That's Romance NSFW, all one word. Uh, You can find me, Shane Sterrett, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for Shane Sterrett or look for my group, The House of Sterrett, on Facebook. You can also find me at my website, ShaneSterrett.com, Shane Sterrett all one word two r's and two t's people <laughs> all of my books can be found on amazon available for kindle in kindle unlimited and also in paperback and i'm on facebook that's where i'm on most of the time social media wise uh, you can follow my fan page or you can join my private group there's adderley's home for wayward troublemakers 
Uh, I'm also on Twitter, gra- Twittergram. I'm on Twittergram, guys. It's a new thing I'm starting. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Just search for Eris Adderley because nobody's going to put up with more than one of me existing. And if you like dirty tentacle aliens, I write all that good stuff as Octavia Hyde. Uh, it's what I'm working on now. So if you want updates on that or just a grip of monster fucker memes, you can search Octavia Hyde. That's Hyde, H-Y-D-E on all those same platforms. You want to read my smut? It's all on Amazon. Currently, everything's in Kindle Unlimited. Well, this has been wonderful, uh, except for the whole ending here, which uh, we had to bring up candy corn, and uh, that should be something that I'm going to start including in the uh, prelude to every episode is that candy corn is a verboten subject. That's um, a hard limit for Shane. That's that it. is, yeah, I'm going to start red, saying red, uh, safe word. You're going to drop in that clip of Shane mm-hmm. from the trailer. I'm going to safe word out. Like, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> Dom I'm gonna can that, safe word too. Yep, I'm going to safe word out if we start talking about candy corn. So, but no, um, again, Nisha, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We really appreciate it. And looking forward to uh, the Christmas anthology when it comes out and uh, your new books. Please the... tell me there's a forbidden candy cane scene. Oh, God. Oh, oh, wow. That's almost like a figging. That has like a figging vibe it's to minty, it. It's right? Yeah, I could get into that. I could definitely get into that. <laughs> Sorry, we're like, we're immediately perving it out. Like, we can't yeah. even be romantic. We're like, what's going in what hole? Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Exactly. And now we know what happened to the figgy pudding. Now we know. Mm-hmm. We, know the, we know where the romance writers are putting it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again. Have a good night. Nice. Thanks.